Wow, that escalated quickly. What's up everybody and welcome back to the War of Reactions. My name is Wolfie and today we're going to be looking at... Issue number three of the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog Bad Guys spin-off series. Without further ado guys, let's get into this. Shadow Basketball! Alright, so if you guys are new to these comic reviews, here's how they normally go. First, I tell you what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and then I give it a score. But first, I must read it back to you in an overly dramatic fashion. And I do mean overly dramatic. But before we get to that, real quick, I know we've been through this a million times, chat. But for those of you who are new here, why not consider scrolling down below real quick and hitting that like button? It helps me out a lot, and of course, I can wait. See? That wasn't so hard. And can we get to 18... What? What's that? Oh, we... We've already hit 18k. We've hit 18k subscribers before the end of the year, just like I knew we could. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. I'm glad you guys like these videos so much. So, I guess the only thing I can say is I hope to keep the quality up and keep making these things for you guys to enjoy. Uh, seriously, I'm at a loss for words. Thank you guys so very much. Couldn't have done it without y'all. And I, I mean, literally couldn't have done it without y'all. Uh, I guess all that said now, um, I guess the new goal is to hit 19k? Let's see if we can do that too. Let's keep growing the channel. I can't wait to see how this goes. Um, so without further ado, actually, let me let me say one more thing. Uh, brief disclaimer, my throat was feeling a little weird when I was doing the dramatic reading on the voice stuff on this one. So if my voice sounds a little off from how it usually sounds in the dramatic readings, it's because, ah, you know, throat's kind of weird feeling this week. I don't know what happened. Uh, I did the best I could. Hopefully y'all understand. All right, now, without further ado, let's get into this. Our book begins with Starline entering a password on his computer, having to repeat a vocal password to verify. A beacon in a sea of ignorance. As the computer accepts his password entry, he speaks again. Reduce volume. Replay last development journal. As he says this, the computer begins to replay the last data entry. Progress log update. Things are moving along swimmingly. The rabble I've rallied to my cause have performed beyond expectation. I now have a surplus of power cores to aid in finalizing my long-term plans. It's also enabled me to fabricate my newest creation, the Tricore. This brilliant bauble will allow me to hold my own against Sonic Tails or Knuckles, should the need arise. And unlike the single-use core gear I've crafted for my teammates, the Tricore can be used in rapid succession, hundreds of times. Phase 2 of the plan happens tomorrow. We'll be invading an Eggnet hub. There, I will erase Egg Base Sigma from Dr. Eggman's databases and change all security to obey me. Once the base is safely lost to the Doctor and under my control, I can finally move on to my true goal. The parameters of that may shift. Zavik, for all of his faults, said some things that stuck with me. But he will not. None of the Rubes will. Once the new headquarters is secured, my new robot forces will eliminate them all. No witnesses, no loose ends. I feel a tad wasteful, but the alternative is too risky. They're far too dangerous to let Rome free. Indeed. Just then, Zavik appears behind Starline, startling him. You move surprisingly quietly for a big guy. When I want to. You're quite stealthy yourself, Mimic. Just then, it's revealed that the Starline watching the playback was none other than Mimic in disguise. Keep your voice down, eh? I don't want to wake the real deal. I never trusted him. But I try not to make a move without good intel. I suspect you came in looking for evidence too? No. I've confirmed his lies for myself. I came to find out if the devices he promised were booby-trapped. See, last issue. Checking... No, they're legit. Really? He's as short-sighted as Eggman. Says here it's to make sure there's no misfires. He wants us to be at our best until he disposes of us. Joke's on you, Doc. You're the one that isn't waking up tomorrow. No. Outside. Now. I'm not waiting for him to pull the trigger. I'm ending this tonight. We still need him to access the egg net. He won't make his move until he feels he's gotten all he wants. Tomorrow he will open the way to what we want. Then I will reward your patience by letting you finish him. Fine, but if it looks like he's moving up his timetable, I'm not waiting any longer. Fair enough. Now get some rest. It all ends in the morning. No, 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 that don't rhyme with Mimic. 
What about gimmick? Uh, maybe? Let's try it out. Okay, ahem. <clears throat> you better not whine. You better not grumble. It's about to get tough. We've got a new gimmick. Get ready for havoc. It's Starline, Tumble, Rough, Mimic, and Zavik. Hmm? Y'all are a bunch of ingrates. That was inspired. It is a sign of growing kinship. Congratulations are in order, Doctor. We still have a long way to go to victory. Don't you think you're being premature? You brought us all together. Your plan is unfolding perfectly. Eggman certainly wouldn't have been able to orchestrate such an operation. I'm glad to command you, my faithful servant. Well, high praise indeed. Thank you, Master. He's fully fallen for my ruse. Good. It will make ambushing him easier. As the next panel shows, all is not well. As Mimic grins sinisterly, knowing exactly what's going on. Soon, the Eggnet hub. As promised, your personalized core gear. Oh, I was expecting something more tail-like. Wear it with pride all the same. Next time, I'll upgrade it into a tail for you. How do they work? They read your biosignatures and react seamlessly to your actions. Act as you normally would, and the power core energy will be distributed instantly. Indulge in your power fantasies, gentlemen. You can achieve anything today. Hey, how come you ain't got one? I have no skills to enhance. It would just be a waste of resources. <laughs> your words, not mine. After this, we see Zavik and Mimic exchange a look. First things first, Mimic, we take down the guard towers, okay? With that, Zavik launches himself into one of the towers, while Mimic takes the other. Doors clear! Give me launch speed, bro! Ruff launches Tumble on top of the fortress wall, where he uses his newfound strength to knock the door down. <laughs> Is this how Sonic lives? No wonder he's so cocky! Meanwhile, Zavik and Mimic continue their onslaught on the guard towers, destroying many egg pawns in the process. Once the group is finished, there's nothing but destruction left in their wake. As they approach their long-awaited goal, Knock knock! No 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 no! There's sensitive equipment in there! Leave the precision work to the professionals, kid. This is it! Mere steps from total victory! Aw oh, come on! I ain't smashed anything yet! Then the interior guard is all yours. Just don't break anything, please. With Starline's permission, Ruff and Zavik begin taking out the last of the guards. You didn't want to control that one? Not nearly as satisfying as obliterating it. Ha! Huh, you're alright, Z. Here, the central computer. You know the login? No, but I've developed a command algorithm to bypass the security. Just had that lying around, eh? No, I've been developing this for... another project. It's not important right now. We'll work fast. After our raid, I'm sure Eggman's on high alert. Oh, he was alerted the minute you and Zavik took out the guard post. He's mobilizing now. What? Calm yourself. We control his information feed now, remember? I'm telling him it's Sonic and giving the coordinates for a completely different facility. Eggman's HQ. Ho ho ho! Somebody's about to learn a lesson in humility because they're about to suffer a humiliating defeat. Scramble the aerial forces. We're about to rain punishment on whoever's causing a ruckus. Hold on, boss. We just got an update. I have the coordinates. Carpet bombing will handle the rest. As thorough as the plan is, the update says it's not from an alert from the Eggnet hub. Intel now says Sonic is ransacking a depot 20 miles to the north. Give me that! Something's not right here. That's too much of a mistake to be a simple glitch. Perhaps Tails sent a dummy transmission in our network corrected the mistake. Or the other way around, and he's trying to throw me off the trail. No matter, I'll check out both. Rain fire and sift through the ashes later. I've got you this time, Sonic. Oh ho 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 ho! He's logged his flight plan. We're in the clear. And the defenses? Suddenly overcome with a desire to protect us. Time to pay the piper, Doc. All in good time. I need to do one thing first. As Starline finishes typing on the computer, registry of the Eggnet base falls under his control. Finally! Huh? I'm done being polite. Zavik, sir? A little help? Whoa, what? I thought we were working together! We were. The doctor was using us. Mimic found evidence this was all a ploy so he could hijack a new base for himself. Once secured, he was going to destroy us all. 
I knew we couldn't trust you. Yeah, we were only pretending to. Go ahead, deny it. Give me an excuse. You need me to delete you from the database. Then do it. It, it would be easier with some room to breathe. You'll manage. Held at knife point, Starline has no choice but to uphold his end of the bargain. Deleting Mimic's entry from the Eggman database. Now assign command of all the badniks in range of this hub to me. This will be the first slice as I carve off more of his territory for myself. Fine, fine, they're yours. You now have a whole army to fight Eggman with. I need to equip my Tricor and... You're a free man, Mimic. At last. And you just conquered a chunk of the Eggman Empire in five minutes. Indeed. You have the core gears and a surplus of cores back at the lab. I guess so. We can do a lot of damage with those. Which means you've outlived your usefulness, Doctor. Next time, the fate of Dr. Starline. And that was issue number three of the IDW spinoff comic, Bad Guys. So let's go ahead and set this guy right down here. I'm going to flip it open and read through it as we cover what happened in this one and give it a review. So this one has a lot of stuff in it that we need to talk about. But before we get to that, the book opens up with Starline, or at least who we assume to be Starline, looking over some logs and kind of making notes to himself. Uh, here's the thing about Starline, first things first. Here, when it comes down to it, I've never really truly understood why scientists make logs of things, especially questionable things that would possibly get them in trouble if other people were to find out about it. I mean, I kind of get where it's coming from because like, hey, this is historical. This is, I need, this is going to be monumental. I need to make a note of this and my studies throughout the process of making this thing or whatever so i'm gonna log it every you know every day or whatever i'll log a new entry data log whatever i am currently making an illegal experiment and i think this might get me in trouble one day with the law but it's worth it you know every log is something like that with scientists and it's always like people find these logs and are always like this guy was crazy or this guy was dumb and it's like I, I understand why it has to happen. A, the logs at the beginning of this book are to get the readers caught up for those who are new to these books, who have never read part one or part two, to kind of what's going on with this story already, and also because Starline does seem like the type who would make logs like this. But still, in the back of your mind, you can't help but wonder, is this really what you want to be doing, Starline? Having logs around and stuff like that. Granted, he had them password security. At least they weren't on the computer, just out in the open for other people to find. But, like, if the wrong person saw these logs, which totally happens in this book, you are now in trouble. So, yeah. The reveal of... <laughs> the reveal of Zavik behind the fake Starline as he's reading these logs is actually kind of funny because it's like, damn, is Zavik really that sneaky despite being that huge? I guess so, because he sure snuck up on Mimic, and Mimic, you'd think, would be very, very good at detecting when other people are around him. What with him being, uh, like, paranoid all the time and always jumpy and on edge. But that being said, Mimic discovers Starline's logs that revealed, oh yeah... The thing I was suspecting the whole time is true. Starline wasn't really trying to work with us. Starline was going to betray us. And of course, Zavik knew that already as well, because that was the first thing he said while he was in the prison cell. Well, the thing he thought was, yeah, this guy's trying to use me. I'm going to make him pay for this. He's trying to use me not once, but twice. This ain't going to fly. Zavik was really not having any of it, and so was Mimic. Uh, rough and Tumble <laughs> are just kind of... Like, they're too dumb to really understand that they're being used, but I do like I do like that there is a secret alliance between Mimic and Zavik after this point because they both realize, oh yeah, he was trying to use us. I mean, they both knew it, but like, confirming it, and they were like, yeah, he's trying to use us. So, here's the thing about this book that I was not expecting. Mimic goes like into straight murder mode quickly. You see how quickly he pulls that knife like, oh yeah, I'll show him, and he's like, like, dude, you're about to kill somebody in their sleep. I mean, we know Mimic to do these things. Like, he is, that's what, he was a mercenary at some point. So you'd imagine he's probably done his fair share of 
shady things, but like the idea that he was going to stab Starline in this in his sleep and just murder him there. If Zavik wasn't there, he was gonna do that. I want to. I also want you to keep note of how many times he pulls this knife in this book and how many times you see him almost about to use it. This is a Sonic book, I should mention. This is something you don't really, you know, really see. The furthest we've ever gotten is like guns and Shadow the Hedgehog and like swords and stuff like that. But like he's got a knife and it's like okay. Then again, he did have it in the earlier IDW books as well. Uh, but still, 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 still. I digress. I like that Zavik and Mimic come up with a plan. They're like, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Since he's planning this, we need to make sure he gets what he needs to get done, so that way we can all get something that benefits us before we take Starline out, right? Because if Mimic killed him right there, uh, Zavik wasn't gonna get the, uh, the tools, the Eggman bases, uh, in the area, and Mimic wasn't gonna be able to delete himself from Eggman's database, allowing him to roam freely. And, uh, Rough and Tumble, sure, they get the, they get the power cores, I guess. But there are nice little moments of camaraderie between the team while they're still working together, where, uh, Rough and Tumble are trying to come up with a new rhyme for, like, <laughs> they're trying to come up with a new rhyme for the group, and it's like, huh? <laughs> this isn't gonna work. There's too many people in this group to make this rhyme properly. But you gotta, like, you gotta admire the attempt. That's their gimmick, and they're sticking to it, god dang it. But you can really tell that Rough and Tumble are kind of like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Us. We're, we're a group. We're a cool villain team. And even though the others are all thinking about betraying each other, it's nice to see that at least Rough and Tumble kind of thought they would be able to work together. Uh... <laughs> Even to the point where I like I like the face that Ruff gives Zavik in that one panel where he's like after he recites the rhyme he's like he like looking at Zavik like eh eh pretty good huh and Zavik's just looking at him like you for real right now like that picture right there is gonna be like a meme <laughs> image or something like but yeah I like that like nobody is they, everybody just sandbags it no one's feeling it it's just like oh god they gotta do this every time just let them do it let them do it but yes. Uh, the, the the best part about this, it's like the opposite situation of the previous issue where Zavik and Starline kind of had a heart-to-heart -heart in that truck. This one is like Zavik's kind of, kind of massaging Starline's ego a little bit. But as you can see in the last panel of that one, a Mimic and Zavik are totally just onto him. Like Mimic's just smiling the whole time. He's like, oh, I know. Well, we're going to get him. Oh, we're going to get him for doing this. We're totally going to betray him. And he's so happy about it. But yeah. Um, the next part of the book, and this is, this part's a little weird, I'll get into this during the review part. Uh, I noticed the coloring is a little strange on the, uh, next few pages of the book. I'm not sure if it's due to time constraints, you know, with, with the pandemic currently going on and everything, and you know, but the colors were kind of... A little weird looking a little bit I'm not saying they were bad I'm just saying compared to the how the rest of the book was colored or inked I'm not sure I'm not really you know a comic book artist so I can't really speak uh, on full knowledge on this one but uh, I did notice that the uh, coloring it seemed like the coloring seemed a little strange for the next few pages but uh, it, it seems to get back to kind of how it was at the beginning at the end of the book, but that's just a minor nitpick and I'll get back to that on the review part. But another thing that they did a good job of was foreshadowing with Zavik seeing that Starline was apparently lying to him and he's just like, let me test this theory real quick. So as you saw in the last panel, somebody in the comment section of the last video pointed out that Zavik grabbed one of the power cores and just kind of looked at it like, hmm, don't really need these tools to kind of use it. So he kind of tested to see if Stalin was telling the truth. Of course he wasn't. So yeah, I like that. Uh, that was one of the big red flags for Zavik. And when questioned about why Starline doesn't use one of these single use power cores that he created just for the team so he could uh, use them is Z uh, Starline saying, oh yeah, I, I don't need, I, I, I'm too weak. I, I don't need it. And then Zavik and uh, Mimic kind of sharing a look like, mm-hmm. Just like we, just like we thought. Yeah, he's totally setting us up, and that's that look of like, you see this B, you see this BS right here. We know, but yeah, uh, uh, Zavik and Mimic go into town on the guard tunnels, uh, the guard towers, and uh, Rough and Tumble also contributing. The group is very strong, but with these new power cores, it's kind of like, oh yeah, these guys are legitimate threats now. Now imagine if they had the multi-use ones that. Uh, that Starline had, like the Tricor version, hmm? They'd be even more powerful. But once all said and done, 
the group gets in there, they get to where they need to go, and finally, it basically all comes crashing down around Starline. Starline doesn't even realize it. He's so full of himself, he doesn't realize that he's being played. He thinks he's playing them. They're three steps ahead of Starline right now. They're setting him up. So the whole time he's talking about using the computer and everything, Mimic's behind him talking like, mm hmm all right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Use your computer real quick. And the whole time, Mimic's like doing this behind him with the knife, just kind of slowly pulling it out. And Starline's like, yeah, great, we're doing it. And, uh, but, but, before we get to that part, Eggman. <laughs> Eggman is just like, he is incredibly smart. Like, the way they painted him in the previous uh, arc with the Zombot virus, he's not that he was incompetent, but it's the fact that, like, man, he is just on his A game this time. Anytime something has gone wrong, he's been like, okay, this is not... This is definitely not Sonic and Tails, and like someone said in the comment section, uh, yeah, you, but probably because Sonic and Tails have fought Eggman for so long, they kind of know each other enough that Eggman's like, this is out of the, this is the out of the ordinary for them. This is out of character for them. They wouldn't attack my base like this. They wouldn't do this. This all seems weird. This is something different. So what happens is this time he's just like, okay, whatever this is, it's like this is clearly a setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to both bases, but I like that he's like, let's just carbon bomb them both. Forget it. I don't care. Like Eggman at this point is just done. He's gonna teach whoever's doing this to him a lesson. So yeah, things are about to escalate very quickly, and I'm curious how this is gonna play out in issue 4 when we get there, which is gonna be the last part of this bad guy series. But yeah, Eggman takes off, presumably to go to the base that he's about to attack, the one of which has the uh, <laughs> our crew in it of Zavik, Starline, Rough Tumble, and Mimic. Uh, but after Eggman takes off, we flash back to the group, and yeah, this part is probably my favorite part of the book. Is just like Zavik and Mimic just staring at Starline. They are just do they are ominously staring at Starline, but he's so caught up in his little game, he's just like, I, I've done it, I, I'm the genius, I'm, I'm the greatest, that he doesn't realize that they're onto him, and then finally, <laughs> it all, it's just the knife, right there to the neck, that's something I want to talk about as well. Can you imagine ever seeing something like that in a Sonic game, where a villain pulls a knife on somebody's neck like that? I'm surprised Sega allowed that, but the reason I'm thinking they allowed that is because these aren't the game characters. Like, you would never see Shadow pull a knife on somebody's neck, or have, like, Mimic do that, do this, like, the knife to the neck with tails. Like, you would never see that. Like, Sega would not approve of that. They'd be like, nah, mm -mm, nope. But since these are, I'd imagine, original characters that Sega has stakes in, that like uh, that were created specifically for the IDW comics, that they're a little more lenient with what they are able to do with these characters. Granted, Zavik is official; he's the most official character here because he's the one that shows up in the games. Besides Eggman, yeah, I, I'm imagining we probably wouldn't be able to see this if this was other characters who were in the games. But still, I like the fact that we're able to see how dark and like menacing Mimic is. Like he is straight to the point. Like, all right, jig is up. We're on to you. Do what you said you're gonna do, or I cut ya neck. I gotta cut ya. I'm gonna cut you into calamari. And I know that's a dark joke considering what I am, but I'm gonna do it, Starline. And Starline's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> and then Zavik reveals, yeah, we were all on to you the whole time, except for Rough and Tumble, who are too stupid, but I like that even they try to play it off like, oh yeah, we, we were totally just pretending too. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. So. Finally, Mimic gets exactly what he wants. He's deleted from Eggman's databases. This now allows him to roam free. This is now bad. This is super dangerous. We don't want him running free. This is not good. Uh, now not even Eggman is going to be able to really keep track of him again. And uh, Zavik, of course, wants the p power control over this this little Eggman base section. So he gets, he's basically slowly but surely taking over Eggman's forces himself. I'm curious if this is going to play into the next arc for the stories of IDW Sonic Comics. I'm not sure. We'll find out. And uh, lastly, lastly, uh, pro Rough and Tumble are promised the power cores from the Eggnet bases. This, after all that is done, they're like, okay, Starline, your usefulness to us is done. Time to die. And that's how our book ends. And it's like, 
it's nice to see everything just come crashing down around Starline. He thought he was so smart, but nope. You're not as smart as you think, Starline. And here's the thing. Where Starline tends to think too far ahead, I think he I think he's like Eggman in a way. They're almost similar. Like Starline thinks so high of himself that he tends to overlook the basic stuff, the easy stuff. I think he's thinking too hard, too smart. The way I see it anyway is that Starline thinks way too highly of himself and because of this, he's not able to see the finer details, the smaller things that would add up to eventually undo him. Where Eggman kind of has this grandiose plan all the time, but he doesn't really think of the long term, but he's able to, like, Eggman's quickly able to adapt on the fly. He's able to think quickly on his feet. Starline, not so much, but yeah, there's strengths and weaknesses to each of them. But I like all these villains getting the, getting the able to turn on Starline now. And yeah, with that said, that's how our book ends. So yeah, this one, I think I like this one a little... Mm. I like this one almost as much as the last one, but that last one still has the, the benefit of the Zavik and Starline conversation, which I enjoyed a lot. This one was kind of cool just to see how Mimic and Zavik just came up with this whole plan to like counter counteract anything that Starline had planned. I do like seeing Starline kind of getting what's coming to him again, because like, again, he just, he needs to be humbled, I think. Like, he's just, he's just too full of himself. And it's nice to see him taking down a peg. Do I want to see him die? Not necessarily. I think that might be a little too harsh, but still. Just seeing him scared out of his mind because now he's facing people much stronger than he is. I'm, I am curious how he's going to get out of the situation. I, he still has the tricore, so he might be able to use that to escape them. I, they, have, they have their single-use cores too, so they might be able to keep up with him, but like... Also, there's the fact that Eggman is coming, and I'm sure that's going to play into the next issue, too. I'm sure Eggman will come and start attacking the base, and the four of them, I'm sure, sorry, the five of them will have to wind up working together one last time before they kind of just, the truce is over and they all try to kill each other, or they all try to bail out. Or maybe Stalin will use Eggman's attack as a cover to escape underneath all that fire that Eggman's about to rain down on them. I don't know how this next one's going to play out. I mean, it's kind of obvious how it's going to work, but like... This is going to lead directly into our current issues with the IDW Sonic Comics, and we are currently at 34, 33 right now, um, at the time of this recording. So yeah, this is this is great. I uh, I like this one a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to think. What are some things? Let me flip through real quick that I could cover over that I may have missed. Um, I think this one is. I think I'm going to keep this review relatively short. There's not really much else to say. This one kind of had a good mix of action. Uh, 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 good dialogue and the fact that we got to see the different dynamics of the team and uh, it, it kind of makes you sad in a way to think that man this team could have been something if only if only they just weren't so evil and trying to turn on each other though I guess Starline brought this on himself trying to betray them at the start maybe if he had came in with the intent of keeping them actually on this team, Zavik probably wouldn't have wound up working with the team. He probably would have betrayed them sooner or later, or maybe just said, "Ah, screw this! I'm going back to my to my pack or whatever." But like, if he had not done this, he might have been able to slowly but surely earn Mimic's trust. I don't know if you really want Mimic though on your team. He seems like the type that would sell you out for his own safety so maybe not but rough and tumble maybe i don't know do you even want to work with those guys i kind of see starline's point for wanting to get rid of them but yeah i don't know the logs were ultimately his own undoing i mean they were already onto him but them seeing that was not definitely not going to help his case um now that all that has been said i'm trying to think is there anything else i if i miss anything let me know in the comment section below i'm sure i missed something but i you know i I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to flip through. I'm not really seeing anything. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this book in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you feel mad about it? And what would you rate it? I think I'm going to rate this one. I feel, I'm feeling like an 8.4 or an 8.6 out of 10. I'm feeling one of those two. Let's go, let's go right in the middle and go 8.5. 8, between 8.4 and 8.6, 8.5, right there. 8.5 for this IDW bad guy, Sonic the Hedgehog spinoff comic. I like this one. Um, 
yeah, this is this is great. I can't wait to see how this all culminates in the end, how this all ends up, and where Starline winds up, and why he winds up going after Rouge in the current books, or what he does. Maybe that will explain it. I doubt it, but we'll see. Um, anything else? Uh... Yeah, thank you. Uh, I want to reiterate again to thank you guys so very much for your subscribing. Uh, let's see if we can hit 19k before the end of January next year. I don't know. I'm trying to make new goals. Uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the comments section. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, also want to give a brief shout out to my patrons on Patreon.com. Thank you guys so much for your continued support as well. You guys are the real OGs. Uh, and for those of you who have watched all the way to the end, even if you can't become a patron for less than $2 a month and <laughs> getting the early, 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 early video before the YouTube side, we appreciate you, and by we I mean me, Wolfie, appreciates you guys watching all the way to the very end, even though I tend to ramble a lot at the end like, right now uh it, it means a lot thank you guys so very much let's see anything else i gave it the review yeah i think that's all i gotta say guys don't forget to wash your hands wear your mask be safe out there well whatever you decide to do for your winter travels if you do decide to travel just just be safe and be smart about it i'll see you all in the next video whenever that may be so in the meantime guys stay tuned